So today, I was really excited. I'm sure many other people in the country, in the UK, were equally excited because fog was forecast. So I got up early, packed all my camera equipment the day before, and zoomed out of the house. I managed to persuade my wife to drop the kids off, which was a bonus. And I managed to get out in the Peak District. So you can imagine I was so excited when I got here, only to find there is no fog. But I drove through all this fog over here. And I've come to Mam Tor. What I decided to do was walk up Mam Tor, get the sunrise and the amazing fog. But obviously, being no fog, I had to change my plan somewhat. So I decided to do something a little bit different and go and explore and find new areas. So use this as an opportunity to scout new areas. Whilst the weather's not going to be optimal, I've been here many times before, if I'm not going to get a shot in the fog, I'd rather find out where I can get better shots in the future. So I turned left rather than right, and I'm walking up the hill to the side from Mam Tor, which is not a usual hill. It's, if you ever come here, then very few people walk up this hill. But there's different views, different perspectives, and I'm hoping to find something new and exciting. So, when I get to the top here, I'm also gonna have a coffee because I'm absolutely parched. Okay, see you soon. Okay, so I've walked a little bit further up the hill now and as you can see, it's just fairly grey, there's no mist, the light's not going to be great today. I am not going to get an amazing shot, but what I can do is take my time. I'm not in a rush to get some amazing light that's just shone on the side of the, side of the hill or the sunrise that only lasts maybe 10 minutes. I've got a lot of time. So with that time, I'm going to use it and try and plan out for when I come back here and think about where the sun's going to be and take some test shots. So what I try and do is look for different angles and try different things. I experiment, I try and fail more when the light's not so good. And you can see that it's, it's fairly dull, but what I've found here, and hopefully you can see just down here, there's some grasses that are just bending away like that, and they create a great lead in at the bottom of the frame. And a really top tip is to try and create simplicity at the bottom of your frame and uniform patterns at the bottom of your frame. And then as you go up the frame, you lead to the more interesting elements of the image. So it's going to be quite a lot of depth of field on this. I've got it on 24 millimeters on my wide angle lens. And I probably may even go down to maybe 20 millimeters. And I'm, I, I've got probably a third, maybe even a less, maybe a quarter of the, of the sky in, because the sky is fairly dark, it's fairly drab. Again, it's not gonna be a portfolio level um, image by no way, but what I know is that when I come back here at sunset, the sun rises over in that direction and sets over there, then this side of the mountain is gonna get amazing light. So I know I can come back here in sunset and get a great shot. So, I'm gonna take this shot and then I'm gonna walk a little bit further up because there's a great wall that I want to try and take as well. Still great to be getting out, even though there's no mist. A little bit disappointed. Okay, so one thing to remember when the wind's getting up a little bit is you need to increase the ISO. So um, I can go up to probably ISO sort of 400 on this and I want to try a different ISO to see the effect of blurring the grasses in the, in the foreground. So it may be that, you know, I just want to keep it really still and crisp, but it may be that just blurring it down and creating some sort of blurred effect on those grasses can create a really nice foreground. So it's a good idea to try and change the ISO when it's darker conditions like this to change the shutter speed and then that will make a really big difference to potentially the feeling of that image. And yeah, I mean, it, 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 again, it's just a question of just trying different things and experimenting with different things. Because on a day like this, 
you've got nothing to lose but it's still fantastic to be out absolutely amazing Okay, I've got another shot before I head back to the car. And so I've just taken my drone up and one of the great things about the drone is you can sort of get into different positions quite easily and have a look at compositions. Now obviously, as long as you stay low with it, then there's a good chance that you can get into that same position if you, move, if you walk around a little bit. So I've, I've wandered around and just walked to the other side of this wall so to get the fence out of the way. And I've again got these grasses down here and the wall, with a, which is a really strong diagonal through the image. And again, I think this actually could work as a sunrise or a sunset shot, because the sunrise, I'll be shooting into the sunrise, especially in the summer. Um, but in the, in the winter and, the, and, and it, the, the sunset, I'll just be coming right across the image. So I'll, be with, with, so I'll be shooting with that behind me. So it's probably good at both times. I, I think it'd be great as well when the sun mist. So I'm so glad I came up here and, and not over the other way, which is the, the normal way to go. So, so I've got that and then it sort of leads your eye right down and then round back across the ridge of these mountains in the distance. And again, the light's a little bit better now, but there's no sunlight. There's not going to be any sunlight today, which is, which is a shame, but it, it really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take the shot and I'm gonna hike back to my car. I'm gonna have my coffee. And I'm gonna go and see my puppy. No okay, I'm back at home now and before I finish the video, I wanted to quickly go through with you what I would get out of a shoot like this. Obviously, I haven't got any images that I'm gonna share online. Um, they're not fantastic images because the weather just didn't co co cooperate. Um, it was really overcast and it was really flat lighting. However, for me, this is something that I need to do to be able to get good photos going forward. So there's two things that I got out of today, really. One of them is I found a location. So what I do is I, I print it out and then I annotate on that location. So on this, I've got um, here that there's an area where, where um, I've just got to watch this area and probably go a little bit lower, which will allow me to get a shot that will catch the sunset tones on the grasses, but I need to watch that area there. I also need to think about the sunrise and the sunset, and this is probably a sunset location, and the sunset comes from over my shoulder really as I'm looking at this. Um, and, and that should highlight the contours on those mountains. So I've got to think about those things when I go back to this location. So I take a picture of this with my phone and I have that on my phone. When I go back to this location, I can look at my notes and I, can't, and, and I won't miss things because actually on the day, things might get a bit hectic. So the second thing is that I, I quite often with these flat images convert them to black and white. The reason I do that is I want to get color out of the image and look at the form of the image and the shapes that are in the image. So for instance, this wall, I want to be able to see if that's gonna work in, in the shot when I'm just looking at it as, as, as a shape, as, as the form of that wall. And what you can see is from these two images that I shared at the end of the video, is that the one um, shot with the drone higher up looks better than the one lower down. Now I've either gotta move my angle from lower down and probably need to move it around to the right and, and create more and have more grasses in the foreground, or I can go further up the hill with my camera and get a, a shot more like the drone took. I'm not, I don't want to just use the drone shot because it's not high enough quality for when I'm printing big, but if I go higher up the hill, I think I'll be able to get a shot similar to that drone. So by looking at that black and white photo, it allows me to look at the form of, 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 of the image and the shapes in the image rather than get caught up with the colors in the image. Anyway, I wanted to share those with you. You know, going out with a shoot like this is all about coming back with more knowledge to be able to go out and get a great shot next time I go. And quite often, I'll go back to a location like this now, maybe five, six, seven times before I even get a shot that I'm happy with. Um, and it might be, it might take a year or two years to do that. So it's, it's all about patience and perseverance, really, and making sure that you, you, you plan as much as you can to get the best shot.
And before I go, I went home, had a coffee, grabbed pebbles, and we went out for a walk in the local woods. And I was going to vlog about it, but it was so beautiful that I just decided to walk around the woods with pebbles. We found some great new spots as well, and took a couple of images, which, which you can see here. And yeah, I just, I just took them on my phone, um, and I actually had my X-T2 with me, so I just did some handheld shots. They're not the best quality shots in the world, but I do know again that I've got a location I can go back to and I just had a great time that day. So all in all, it's been a great day. I've had a good time and I've got some really good locations to go back to. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll catch you next Sunday. Bye. Mm -hmm.